Which stable coin is going to be the winner and which stable coin are you going to bet on with your hard earned fiat dollars? My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to Tech Path. Today we're going to dive into USDC and Circle, which is really kind of the evolution of where the stable coin market has kind of moved, but there are a lot of happenings around Circle that are essentially kind of driving the whole focus of where maybe your stable coin is going to be getting the most bang for buck. Let's jump into it today. I want to get going before we get going too far. Let's jump over to our first story. And that is essentially how Circle is um, moving. And I wanted to talk about some of the key things that they've done here. One is they're making it very easy now to go from your bank uh, to DeFi with USDC. So obviously this is the biggest issue. The, the big the big thing about any of the USDCs is can you utilize fiat dollars to start to utilize uh, banking services out of it? So what they did is they announced the addition of automated clearinghouse, that's ACH payments. You guys use this all the time right now. If you're paying people online from your bank, this is a common thing. And uh, essentially what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow customers to use ACH to elect electronically transfer funds between regulated banking places, your banks, do full pay bill, uh, bill pays, the whole thing. Uh, this is a big play for Circle and it's a good, I think it's a good option as we start to see this merger between, you know, these cash accounts, which is where a lot of uh, fiat money is just parked and what could be going out there in terms of opportunities for both uh, dividends and yields, uh, being able to get access to those yields and then yet still have the ability to utilize banking services such as ACH, debit card, all those kind of things. And I think as we see more and more companies maybe move into this, this could be a very interesting thing. We just did a video with um, Digital Asset News breaking down two of the category leaders, one Voyager and the other Celsius in terms of yields, uh, especially around USDC. USDC is holding out at around 8.8%, I think on Celsius and 9% on Voyager, uh, if you're just parking cash in accounts. And of course, as we all know, the stable, count, uh, stable coins have been a consistent way to be able to get yields and also do some other things with that now with the ACH features that they've dropped into us. So that's, that I think is going to be a good one. This was from uh, Jeremy Allaire, which is a tweet. Uh, Jeremy Allaire is the CEO of Circle, uh, one of four. Uh, so today we rolled out new Circle APIs and ACH payments. Uh, right there, ACH for payouts and payments, big. Our implementation uh, makes it super straightforward to get a, a bank transfer and convert it instantly to DC, USDC uh, for payment, trading DeFi or commerce applications, which is gonna be huge. And I think this is gonna be a thing that will be an ongoing advantage for Circle. Now, one of the things that is uh, in, interesting to, to me on this is that we're starting to see more and more of these companies jumping into these high yields. And I wanna to jump to this story on Coinbase, which essentially is doing the same thing that uh, Voyager and Celsius is doing now with USDC. So they're jumping into the high yield crypto game, 4% they're paying on interest for USDC. Still not quite the high, super high yields you get from the other two players in the market, but for the fact that Coinbase is coming in, which is basically the 800 pound gorilla in the crypto space, this is a big opportunity because a lot of people use Coinbase and Coinbase Pro in terms of the total number of people that are invested. And USDC is, I mean, just being able to park cash into USDC over there at Coinbase is gonna be a, a massive move for uh, Coinbase and for Circle. Now there are some things that kind of connect the dots here with Coinbase and Circle. And this is the reason that I think Circle is really the one to watch. And when I say, the one to watch over Tether. And even though Tether is an interesting stable coin and they've been able to kind of get their ship righted after being a little bit, what I, from what I understand, a little bit underfunded uh, to be able to back that stable coin, USDC is actually in the process of now circling back, no pun intended, to go public through a $4.5 billion SPAC deal. This is gonna be a big thing because a SPAC for a stable coin, I think, and what Circle does in terms of all their uh, financial transaction services is gonna be huge. And the other thing that's gonna kind of play into it 
is the fact that Circle and Coinbase are starting to connect. And I think we're going to start to see some of these projects, and I shouldn't say projects, some of these platforms like Coinbase really start to isolate in on certain stable coins. And with that kind of isolation, I think what you're going to deal with is a tremendous move away from Tether and over to Circle and uh, USDC. That's going to be interesting to watch because as you saw there on our coin market cap earlier, Tether's still in the top three, four coins here, or, you know, stable coins. They're the number one stable coin out there, but their market, you know, cap is unbelievable. And for USDC to be able to uh, make these moves, I think this is going to be one to really get inside. Let's kind of dive into this story. So the Circle company behind the US uh, dollar coin, stable coin, has announced it's going to go public. Uh, through a deal with the, uh, the spe Special Purpose Acquisition Group, that's the SPAC Concord Acquisition Corp. Va uh, the value is going to be somewhere around $4.5 billion. company raised a whopping $440 million in funding last month. Uh, there's uh, Jeremy Allaire, who said, powerful backers who are committed to our mission and vision will redouble our efforts to expand into new markets. And I think that's where they're going in terms of the overall product of what Circle is really kind of getting to in terms of ACH. And of course, uh, they're partnered uh, with crypto change exchanges like FTX, all those kind of things. These are the things that really start to play into, one, not only uh, Circle and USDC taking a leader position, but strategically, when you look at the SPAC, you look at the relationship they've built now with Coinbase and you look at some of the other major exchanges and yield, uh, yield places that are essentially platforms that are essentially preferencing USDC over all other stable coins. I think this really starts to point in one direction and that is that we will see a transition of the guard, maybe not this year, possibly though uh, in 2022, where USDC could take over as the number one stable coin out there. It'd be interesting to see also if and when we see the digital dollar come out from the U.S. government, how it relates out or potentially maybe even plugs in to USDC. That is, that is going to be something to watch. I wanted to jump to this last piece over here, FTX and Circle Partner to improve uh, the stablecoin support. This is going to be a big one, I think, and one that you have to have in play in terms of uh, really kind of the whole support system that you have to have in place. So obviously uh, FTX teamed up with them for additional support. Uh, the jointly creating Circle and the cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase is a dollar peg stable coin. Basically, this is all moving in the right direction. So it's going to allow customers of FTX, as well as those of its subsidiaries, remember Blockfolio, all those people will be able to use this whole ACH, ACH <laughs> or international wire transfers and credit and debit card uses uh, with basically their USDC accounts. So this is where it gets really fun because I think we are going to see more and more companies really moving in this direction. The platforms are already uh, tilting this way, of course, with Visa, the Visa connection uh, around things like Southeast, Voyager, uh, even Robinhood for that matter. I would like to see more and more integration of crypto platforms and stable coins on Robinhood because I think that would be just another opportunity uh, to do some yield opportunities there with Robinhood. Kind of like what Coinbase has done, because I think Coinbase and Robinhood are going to be in a little bit of a race for uh, the best potential platform for millennials in terms of crypto trading. And that will depend on whether or not Voyager can kind of really go into the desktop version and if they can up their, uh, their app in terms of um, just the UI and the look and the feel, because that's going to be a big part of this. So all of this plays into these stable coins. All of this starts to come into focus especially around Circle and the partners in which they have in this deal. There's a ton of people that are really starting to, one, connect with Circle and understand kind of the direction that they're going and what they're trying to do from a financial standpoint in terms of banking services and so on. With all of that playing into the, uh, to the game, I think what we've got here is, as I said, a transition of the guard. It's going to be very interesting to watch and I think one to keep a Ion, I'd love to hear your comments on whether you're utilizing USDC or maybe you're use, using Tether as your stablecoin and how you're using it. Are you parking cash in there uh, ready for trading or are you looking at using these high yield accounts 
whether it's Celsius or Voyager or even now Coinbase, to be able to yield on your USDC. I'd like me to kind of get interested on how you guys are doing that. Love to get your feedback too on whether or not you think these strategic moves are the thing that potentially could really kind of stabilize USDC as the go-to stable coin for the future and really kind of that transition or bridge between what we see in crypto and maybe where banks are gonna be moving in terms of that handoff transaction opportunity that Circle's trying to put together. So it's gonna be interesting to watch. Jeremy Allaire, their CEO, keep a, keep a close eye on this guy because he is, one, he's very smart uh, and I think he's in the right crowd in terms of partnership deals and opportunities from a technology standpoint, especially around centralized finance, meaning the banking system and where this might go in the future. So stay tuned here. We're gonna cover this more and more on where stable coins are going and also which one to bet on and where you should be putting your money if you are setting on cash right now, just, you know, this is something I do. It's definitely not financial advice, but it's something I do. And I'm utilizing both Celsius and Voyager for these high uh, yield accounts for USDC. It's, it's an easy transition. There are some benefits on both platforms, uh, depending on if you want to get access to a loan. I think I would go Celsius route if you wanted to get access to your cash without pulling it out uh, down the road, especially if you go into Bitcoin uh, investment. But over on uh, Voyager at the same time, if you do some Voyager token uh, investments, you can, you can get some small percentage bumps in your USDC. So there's a lot of different angles that are really playing into that. So make sure and give us your, um, you know, your insights. I'd love to hear what you guys have to, have to say about these stable coins because I think this is gonna be a big factor in the future and we need them. It's a huge part of the crypto community and it's a huge part of where we're going forward in terms of our crypto journey. Make sure, and of course, if you're listening in over on the podcast right now, give us a few stars over there. And of course, follow us on Spotify if you're out there on, on Spotify. Here on YouTube, the best thing you can do is subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and best of all, share this with someone and help them maybe start their technology journey because technology is really starting to shift in terms of all these innovation opportunities that are creating just absolute insane market opportunities, both for investment, but also just for everyday life. So much is changing, whether it's EV, autonomy, AI, robotics, or cryptocurrency, all those kind of things is what we touch on here on TechPath. If you have an idea for a show, hit me up on Twitter. It's just at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.